Hello, this right here is my Voron switch wire. It's a Core XZ printer. What that means is the Z motion is driven by belts and I love belted Zs on 3D printers. It has numerous advantages. It can be cheaper than a traditional lead screw setup. You don't have to worry about lead screw wobble. It can be more compact and it's much faster. So if you're printing something with a lot of Z hopping, you can actually save quite a bit of time. Uh, but there are some downsides to it. And for example, on my switch wire here, you need to have this key back installed to prevent your gantry from crashing down when you power off the printer such as this. unless it doesn't. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how using this little board prevents that from happening. Let's get started. Now, while Belted Z does have numerous advantages, as I said earlier, it can be more compact than a traditional lead screw setup. Uh, the cost on a system like a Voron V2 where you have Z drives in each of the four corners are usually, it's more cost effective to go with a belted system versus integrated lead screws. You can move much faster on Z travels, which yeah, you can you know cool, do cool little trade show demo movement tests. But when you're printing something tall like an Eiffel Tower with a million Z hops, those time savings do add up in the long term. And it allows you to do cool motion systems such as Core XZ, like on the Voron switch wire. But there are some disadvantages to that, and namely is holding torque when the motors are powered off. So when the machine is online, the motors are energized, it usually operates like you would expect any normal 3D printers. But if you disable your stepper motors using like an M84 command, or you power off the machine, traditionally on a setup like this, there's really not enough holding torque to keep the gantry or the bed in position and things kind of come crashing down. Now you can get away with this using multiple methods. On a system such as a Voron V2, for example, there is gearing in the Z drive modules. So that combined with the inherent torque of even a powered off motor is enough to keep the gantry up. Although you should expect a couple steps of drop on power off still. On a Voron V0, with the belted Z mod, for example, the bed can be light enough that if you have a big enough motor, even when powered off, it shouldn't come crashing down, but there really isn't much holding it up. The switch wire is different, however. On a switch wire, traditionally, when you power the motors off, if you don't have the key back holding your gantry up, it's gonna come crashing down. And how the key back works, on the switch wire, you mount it in a way so that the force comes up and around the top of the gantry, attaches to the X axis itself, and that basically acts like a counterweight keeping things in position. Now, counterweights are actually something we should be using more in 3D printing in my opinion, especially on a Z axis. With lead screws, you usually don't have to worry about it too much, but think about it, you're taking weight off of the object moving, so the motors have to work less to provide motion. Now on CNC machines with their big heavy gantries, counterweights are extremely common, but with the lighter weights of 3D printing, usually it's not something we worry about, but hey, if you're designing 3D printers, it could be something to keep in mind uh, if you're working on a big design. So how does this little PCB board here uh, with a few components soldered to it, keep our gantry from crashing down? Let's go over to the bench and take a look. So first off, I just want to thank Project R3D for sending me this board for testing and evaluation. If you want to get, pick up one of these boards yourself, link in the description. So this board works using something that you may have encountered if you've ever wired up a stepper motor incorrectly uh, to apply brakes to your stepper motor. So on a normal stepper motor, if it's not plugged in or if it's not engaged, you know that you can move the motor freely. There is a little bit of force that's required. Uh, there's an inherent holding torque that most motors have. Usually the bigger the motor, the more it has. And on a system like the V2 where you have some gearing, that may be enough to hold your gantry up. But let's say on a switch wire, we don't have any gearing. Motor is directly attached the belts, we need some more holding torque when we power off. How does this board work? Well, if you've ever wired up a stepper motor incorrectly, or you have a stepper motor where the wires are bare, you haven't put a crimp on or anything, if you twist the pairs of wires, you may notice it takes more force now to move the stepper motor. You've, just, you've essentially locked it up and applied the brakes. So this board accomplishes what twisting your wires together does. How it works is when you wire up your motors and you do your wire routing, you install your motors as you normally would. This other end connects to your controller board as it normally would, but you need to put this in the middle. So the kit does come with uh, pins and connectors. So you're gonna have to do some stripping and cripping, obviously. You cut your wire, you install this somewhere in between. Make sure that the order of the color of your wires remains the same going in, going out as it does on the connector for your wires. Then remember, there is no universal standard for wire colors on stepper motors. Every manufacturer can do it different. So 
If your stepper motor comes with a header connected to the wires already, keep them in the same order so you know it's right. And you're gonna find somewhere to install this. On my setup here, I just use double-sided tape uh, to hold it. This does have M2.5 screws for mounting it. So if you wanna CAD up, 3D print a bracket, you can. If you are using double-sided tape, uh, just be aware that these pins can push through it. So make sure you don't mount it to anything conductive. I mount it to the ABS sheet on the bottom of my printer. So nothing to worry about there. So after you connect your stepper motor, there's also this plug right here. This is for 24 volts. And how this works, is when you don't have 24 volts applied to it, it essentially twists the wires up and prevents your stepper motor from moving easily. When you do apply 24 volts to it, it unlocks the motors and it allows it to operate normally. So the simplest way to set one of these up, wire up your motors normally, wire this up in line with your stepper motor and connect this to your power supply. That way, when you kill power to your printer, your motors automatically lock up. Now, on most 3D printers though, on power up, your motors are not enabled. So on Duet, for example, you can use the M17 command in your configuration file, and this will automatically enable your motors on startup. And you need to make sure you do not disable your stepper motors or everything's gonna come crashing down. So those are some configuration changes you're gonna have to do. However, if you wanna be a little bit more advanced or if you're running Clipper, you're gonna have to get a little bit more into it. So my switch wire here runs Clipper, and as much as I love Clipper, there are a few downsides in a situation such as this. Namely, boot up time. It actually takes time from the moment you power on your printer for the Raspberry Pi to boot up, Linux to boot up, and mainsail, fluid, octoprint, etc., to fully load up, and your configuration to be loaded. So we need to figure out a way of setting this up so that on power up, it remains enabled, but as soon as our configuration loads, then the motor unlocks. But then we need to prevent the motor from dropping. So in Clipper, how do we do that? Let's go to the computer and set it up. But before we head over to the computer and do the configuration, I just wanna take a quick moment to thank those that help support this channel. This channel is my full-time job and I would not be able to do the things I do and create the content I create without your continued support. So for those that help support the channel, I thank you. And if you would like to help support the channel, there are links in the description as well. Also, consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon supporter. Every month we do an exclusive live stream for supporters of the channel. And if you're a member of the Discord, you get access to a super secret channel that only they know about and also access to videos early. Thank you for making this all possible. Now let's head over to the computer for some fun configuration action. Yay. So we have our printer online now, and I'm gonna go into the main sale interface here, load up the configuration and show you how you use this board with Clipper or at least how I set it up. So we have our Clipper interface here. Uh, this is for my switch wire, Kenny. And as you can see, we have something here in miscellaneous called my pin. This is the pin that keeps our gantry from crashing down. Now, when you wire this up, instead of wiring up that 24 volt to a power supply, you're gonna have to wire it up to an available pin that's 24 volts and you have control over. So for example, an extra heater or a fan like I used in my case here. Then we're gonna go into our printer.cfg and I added this include breaks.cfg file here. So all the configuration that I did to make this operational is its own configuration file and I call it breaks.cfg. And this is how I have it set up. So in breaks.cfg here, I'll go through and I'll explain everything here and what it's doing and how I have it set up. So the first thing we have here is our output pin space my pin. This is the pin we're using to control our break board here. And I have the pin is P2.3. Now that corresponds to the specific fan that I'm using on an SKR 1.3. Depending on which controller board you're using and what connection you are using for controlling this board, you're gonna have to use the appropriate pin number there. The inherent value that I have here is zero. So that means on boot up, and loading of this configuration, it is zero. Zero is the brakes engaged, it is not enabled. Remember, when we enable this, when we apply power to it, it disables the brakes. And our shutdown value is zero. So that means when you hit the e-stop or you shut down the machine within Clipper itself and not doing a hard power off, it returns to that zero state, which again, enables the brakes. And our next section here, this is some G code that we want to run on boot up of this printer. So after our configuration loads and it loads up, with your brakes enabled. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to set the pin value for one. So this now disables our brakes 
And then we have these two lines here set stepper enable, stepper motor Z and stepper motor X. If you are running a setup that uses multiple Z motors, such as a Voron V2, you would use stepper motor Z, Z1, Z2, Z3, etc. But since this is a core XZ setup, we're using motors X and Z, and this enables them. Now there is a slight delay here. I do need to have this initial duration. I did some testing. If I try to run this G code immediately on startup, it does cause some issues, um, but adding this 0.01 second delay uh, essentially makes it work. Now, unfortunately, there still is an ever so slight delay between this disabling and the motors enabling. So your gantry is gonna drop ever so slightly, uh, but it's better than the gantry, you know, slamming into the bed. How do we keep our motors from crashing later on? So for example, on the default configuration for Clipper, if you enable your motors, they automatically disable after 600 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. So you have two options here. The first option is to prevent your motors from disabling altogether. So if you want, you can have this command here, idle timeout, G code, and you just leave it blank because it's this number here is how long you would want to change the idle timeout to. Default is 600, so if you don't have this line here, it's 600 in your configuration by default. But if you add this line and then you do not put a number here in the G code, it just never times out your motors. So what this means is when you turn your machine on, your motors enable, and when you finish a print, they'll just stay enabled. Now you have to be careful not to issue an M84 or an M18 command to disable your stepper motor. So if you have that in your ending G code, you may want to remove that. Uh, but this will keep your gantry up the entire time your printer is turned off. And of course, when you turn your printers off, the brakes enable. But there's a downside to this. One, your motors are constantly engaged. So if they do generate noise, you're gonna be hearing that and it uses a little bit more power. So how can we have it set up so that when we disable our motors, the brakes engage. And that's by using these three macros here. G code macro M18 and M84. These are the two commands for disabling your stepper motor. And we're just renaming the existing command, which I've called M18000. And what this command does is it basically takes the original M18 command and it adds the set pin value zero command. So when you go and type M18 into your console, or you have M18 in your ending G code, or your idle timeout occurs, which triggers an M18 or an M84, I can't remember which one. It disables your stepper motors, enables the brakes. And then we need to now figure out a way to re-enable our stepper motors and disable the brake. So I've essentially done the exact same here with the G28 command. So we rename the original G28 command and you need these zeros here uh, just to make it work with the clipper configuration syntax and whatnot. And we have to have set the value of the brakes to one, which again, disables the brakes. And then the original G28 command with three zeros at the end, again, syntax reasons. If you have this G28 command before the set pin, it will error out because it will try to move the stepper motors before it disables the brakes and you'll get a driver error. So on these two commands, it's okay to have the M84 and the M18 before the pin value because you're disabling the motors, then enabling the brakes. On the G28 here, you need to disable the brake and then enable the motor. So you just need to remember that. And that is it. Now, I'm sure on other firmwares such as Duet and Marlin, you can set it up in a way that emulates these sort of macros. It's been a hot minute since I've played with those. So I use Clipper. This is how I have it set up in Clipper. Once you have that all set up, of course, hit save and restart and you should be good to go. So now how this whole setup works is on power up of your printer, the brakes will stay enabled. On immediate loading of your configuration, the brakes will disable and your X and Z motors will enable and it will prevent your gantry from dropping. When you command a home move or any other movement like it's printing, it's gonna behave exactly as it did before, nothing will change. But now when you command an M18 or an M84 G code command, such as when you put your motors to idle or at the end of a print, or you just go ahead and kill the power to the printer, your Z will no longer come crashing down. And there you have it. That's how I have this system set up on my switch wire here, and it's working great. Now, there are a few caveats that you need to keep in mind. Uh, with my switch wire, with the stepper motors that I have spec for it, and the weight of the gantry, even though these brakes do engage on both motors, 
Sometimes my gantry does sag ever so slightly. Now it's not dropping to the ground with the force of a thousand suns, but over the course of 10 or 15 minutes, it does slowly sag down until it touches the bed. And I'm attributing that to the weight. I've done a little math. Essentially this tool head with the LGX and this combination of stepper motors, it barely just does not have enough holding torque, even with the brakes applied to hold it up. On a system like my Voron V2, it would hold it up perfectly. And on my v belted V0, um, again, this would hold it up no problem. So it really depends on your configuration. If you do try this and you find your stepper motors with the brakes are not enough to hold your gantry up, you may need bigger stepper motors so you have more inherent braking power when you twist those wires up. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you wanna learn more about Clipper, why not check out this video right here? Also, if you wanna check out these boards from Project R3D, and if you wanna pick one up, link in the description as well. Take care and cheers.